At Manchester Airport, a flight has just arrived from Dubai. Border officers and immigration have stopped a British man who's lost his passport. They've let him into the country, but want customs officers to speak to him. He's turned up without a passport. Um, he came off to Dubai. He's been drinking and he's arrogant, is the word they used. But I'm sure you'll be able to cope with that, 99152. Thank you, Chief. With the man's rather unusual behaviour, border officers in immigration have suggested searching his bags. He didn't seem that drunk. He looks completely out of it. Yes, sir. I want to go to... Salford, you know? You want to go to? Salford. Yes, Salford. Right, well, first of all, you need to get out of here. Do you have anything to, to declare? Do you need to speak? Sorry? I need to speak. No. No. Where have you arrived from? I come from Daha. Right. Yeah. Officers take the man aside for further questioning. Where did you lose your passport? In the, in the airport. In the airport in yeah. Dubai? No, Dubai, oh, I don't know where. You don't know where you've lost it? Well, I did have it with me. No, I, I don't know why. Is it a British passport? British. Right. Well, I'm going to look inside your bags and oh, I'm going to ask you some questions. Somewhere. Are these all your bags here? This one, this one is mine. Yeah, did you pack them yourself? What? Did you pack them all yourself? Yeah, yeah. I... Do you know what's inside the bags? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone given you anything to carry? Anything? No, nothing too bad to carry. Well, okay. Yeah. Have you had a few drinks on the plane? Yeah, one or two. One or two? Aye. All right, okay, that explains a few things. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lie, I'm going to lie. All right. What do you do? Do you work here or are you a student? No, I'm no student, nothing. I just, I'm, my family here, right, I just see my family here. Where is your home? No. Flatly, Flatly. Flatly? Flatly. Like Michael Flatly? <laughs> no, it's called Flatly. Flatly? Yeah. He's... Where, where, which country is that? It's in Bangladesh. Right. In Bangladesh. I, so you, I... your home is in Bangladesh? No, my, my, my home is in England. Yeah, where, just said... where in England is your home? Well, my sister. Right. Right. I just, my family, my mom. You went to Bangladesh to visit your family. family. And how long have you been away? How long? I mean, four, four weeks. Four weeks? No, no, I mean four months. Four months? Four months, yeah. So how long? It's a long time. Yeah, quite long. But what my colleague asked was... Right. Do you work in, yeah, yeah, in Manchester? Catering. Yeah, catering. Catering? Yeah. Aye. Catering, yeah. Catering was... Even the simplest question seems too much for this passenger. It could be a long afternoon for the officers. At Gatwick Airport, a plane has just arrived from Nigeria. East Africa is a known source for Class A drug smuggling, and it's up to the UK border officers to stop and question any suspicious passengers. Can you put your bags on the bench for me, sir, please? Right. I'll just ask you a few questions first of all. OK, so you started your journey in Nigeria, is that right? Dubai to the UK. Right, OK. And how long will you stay in England for? I'm leaving at 7 p.m. this evening, 7 or 5. OK, and where are you flying on to? Netherlands, Amsterdam. OK, and what's the reason for your trip to Amsterdam? Vacation, I'm on vacation, I'm just travelling through Europe. Do you have friends or family in Amsterdam? No, I've you... reservation. And you're not travelling with anybody else? Just me. I'm OK, honest. what's your occupation in Nigeria? IT consultant, I used to live in the US. So from Amsterdam then, where are you going? Zurich. You're going to Zurich? OK, so how how long will you stay in Amsterdam for? Just one day. And then you'll fly on to Zurich? Yes, and I take a train back to London. How long will you stay in Zurich for? One day. I'm just travelling to Europe, that's it. Hazel is alerted by the man's whistle-stop tour of Europe. Her suspicions are heightened when she finds a cheque for a substantial amount of money. So who's Alex? A friend of mine. And is this 16,000 American dollars? That's right. Okay, why, why are you writing him a cheque for 16,000 American dollars? Because um, 
I owe him the money and I'm, he's in the US and I'm just meeting him from here to him in the US. Hazel's not satisfied by the man's explanation, so the officers swab his suitcase for drugs. There we go. I won't be one minute, OK, sir? Thank you. We're just going to see if there's been any contact with controlled drugs. The one that this machine tests for is cocaine or heroin. So there's a reading come up, um, a middle size or a medium reading for contact with both cocaine and heroin. Hazel, there was a 0.51 reading for contact with cocaine, yellow, so right. me me medium size, middle sure. size. Okay. Hazel confronts the man with the evidence. The machine we have tests for traces of drugs, and what he's just told me is that there was a background trace for cocaine. I've never used cocaine before. Have you ever been near any drugs? Never, or never No? Never touched it. Okay. The man is adamant, but Hazel can't rule him out as a smuggler just yet. He's got really hardly any luggage. His trip is for seven days. Yeah. Have we ever had swallowers that have come in off the Dubai? We have, haven't we? We have, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take this further because I'm not, I'm not happy with him at all. I'll yeah. get permission for a search, I think, and then put him through the body scan. In Manchester, officers are still trying to get some sense out of the inebriated passenger. OK, what's this then? This one? No, nothing bad. Right. Take your money. All your money. You take it. Okay, All right. You're happy. No, I'm not a man. It's nothing bad. Fruit? Yeah, fruit. Yeah, I need fruit, yeah. Right. Do you know, you have too many cigarettes. Do you know that? Too many cigarettes? Yeah. Oh, only three packs. You're not allowed three packets, you're allowed an allowance of 200. I don't know. This is my first time. I right. swear to God, I don't know. This is my first time anyway. Okay. The officers are used to dealing with all kinds and are satisfied this man has just had a bit too much to drink. Then, I. <laughs> I think because you've drunk too much. No, no, no. I'm a... I see, think, no. See, it does make me, give me a hard time. Right. I've never been, it's never, if I'm drunk, obviously, it's something bad, but right. it's no. nothing listen, bad to listen, me. And I, why should... Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, but... You've lost your passport, so you might lose these cigarettes, so I'm yeah. sticking them in here, okay? okay I'm but... fucked up. I you... it, yeah. Don't lose that. I never Because knew... that's all you've got left, no. ID-wise. Put it in your pocket. I, but... You're younger than me, boy. I'm younger than you. Give me a good lesson. And, and I'm I younger than you. I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> I'm younger than you. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The man is keen to explain how and why he lost his passport. I have a nice flight. I have a passport. And um, I can't understand why. I have a passport with me. And someone say, oh, I lost my passport. This is that. And the passport is gone. So that makes me... Uh, very bad. In the plane, they have drink. Obviously, I have a good time in the nice flying, you know. Happy that he's heeded their warning. Officers send him on his way. Thanks. All right. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. To the, the left, right. to the left, left, right. and then right. Left and then right. Okay. Oh, watch yourself. He'd had a bit of drink, but he was a nice fella, I think. He had a bit of fruit. Um, and... Uh, a few ciggies, too many. I just hope he finds his way home. Okay, sir. Thank you. Bye. At Gatwick Airport, Hazel's still trying to verify the Nigerian man's story to work out why he's travelling with a cheque for thousands of dollars. And what is it you owe this man the $16,000 for? It's money he gave to me is in the US. I'm sending it back because I'm not traveling to the US. I said, well, I'm in the UK. I'll get a stamp, put it on it, and mail it to the US. But why did you borrow the money from him? Yeah, I'm a businessman. I just started my business. I need people to give me money to run my business. I'm not completely happy with what he's telling me. And whether all this is just a, a smoke screen for the fact that he's bringing drugs here and he could have booked it and then cancelled it when he gets back, I don't know. Yeah. He's been very cooperative so far. I think he's likely to agree to a body scan. Yeah. Um, so if you're happy, I'd just like to put him through the machine. OK, sir. Um, what I want to do, we've got one last thing we can do. That's OK. OK. Um, and that is to just give you a quick X-ray. The man is put through an X-ray to reveal whether he swallowed any packages. 
On examination of the images, it's clear the man has nothing inside him. OK, that's fine, sir. Thank you very much for your time and your cooperation. Despite the indicators, the man is innocent and free to go. And thanks to his cooperation, he leaves with plenty of time to catch his connecting flight. At Gatwick Airport, it's rush hour as scores of holidaymakers arrive back from outside the EU. Husband and wife officers Paul and Hazel are bracing themselves for a busy night. Hello, where have you just arrived from? Uh, Turkey. Cigarettes will be their main aim as they look to intercept passengers carrying more than 200. <laughs> Do you have anything in excess of your duty-free allowance? 1,800 bag. Right, OK, you can only bring 200 back each. And am I going to guess right in saying you've got more cigarettes than that one as well? See, you could do my job, thank you. Is there another one? Thank you. OK, I don't think I need to tell you, you know you're in the wrong. Yeah. If you're found to be in possession of excess revenue goods again, you could end up being prosecuted. The tobacco seizures are already mounting up. The next flight in is from Moldova, and Hazel and Paul want to examine the bags before the passengers pick them up. On this flight, it's um, been known that people bring in quite a lot of cigarettes. What's happened is there's only 27 passengers on this flight, so the bags have all been delivered, um, but there's no passengers in the reclaim at the moment. So the bags will be coming round again, so we'll have a second shot just to have a look at them outside. It doesn't take long for Paul and Hazel to spot some dodgy bags, and Sarah finds some sneakily hidden cigarettes. A few cigarettes. Obviously, you can see a couple of cartons here inside the suitcase, but there's also a few that I can feel under the lining here. Just have a look in there. There's a few cigarettes under there. Uh, and also, in an effort to try and hide them, there's actually some that I can feel in the bottom of here. These are, I'll just hold them, a pair of uh, waterproof trousers. Paul heads back out to wait for the passenger to claim the bag with the green trousers. Hello. Hello. Yes. Where have you arrived from? From Republic of Moldova. Moldova? OK, if you'd like to bring your bags in. Paul reminds the man about the rules. There's allowances with regard to cigarettes yeah. and tobacco. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you understand it? And what do you understand those allowances to be? I don't know. You don't know? So it's 200 cigarettes. But Paul knows he's got a lot more than 200. OK, so you've got 600 there, which is three times what you're allowed. Yes? It's three times what you're allowed for 600 cigarettes, yes? Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. So you're over by three. Yes? All three right. times. Three times the allowance, yes? Yeah. Have you got any other cigarettes or tobacco in here? Yeah, a good couple of more. Couple more what? Cigarettes. Yeah, but how many? Just two. Just those? Yeah, maybe more. Maybe more? Yeah. Why don't you tell me how many? I don't know exactly. I, I bring this souvenir for my friend. As a souvenir? Yes. I've never heard of a cigarette called a souvenir before. Because it's expensive. They ask me for cigarettes. So how many cigarettes have you got in total? Maybe... I've got here cigarettes. And you've hidden them inside yeah. the case? Why have yeah. you hidden them in the case? They told me. They told you to hide them? Why? Because you're not allowed to bring them? Maybe I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Okay. The man's being evasive, and he's yet to mention the cigarettes hidden in the waders. At Manchester Airport, a flight has just arrived from Pakistan. It's from outside the EU, so passengers here are also limited to just 200 cigarettes. But the X ray identifies a pink box, which officers suspect is well over the allowance. Before I even put it through, I thought the weight for the size is right as well, and the, um, the density is right. Right, let's go. The box is put back on the belt, and Officer Ass heads out to the reclaim area to see who picks it up. Well, I'm going to x-ray your bags, OK? I'm going to x-ray your bags. So this way. Are you travelling alone? Yeah. And where is it you're travelling from? A young man travelling by himself has claimed the box and Az takes him in for further questioning. It's bad news. Do you know what your allowance for cigarettes are? It's 200. 200 cigarettes, one to leave the cigarettes. How many do you have? 
How many? Nine. Nine sleeves. Okay. I'm gonna look inside all these bags now, okay? You still sticking with nine? All right, could you open this for me, please? Having seen the x-ray for himself, as knows he's carrying a lot more than nine sleeves. Six in there. Oh, so there's more than nine? Yeah. Why didn't you say that right from the start? The man realizes he's busted. I'm going to seize these cigarettes because you're well over your allowance. That's all you're allowed. If you bring anything like this in, you need to declare them. You need to let the customs officer know that you've got more than 200. But the 10,000 cigarettes will be seized, and he won't be selling them illegally on the UK black market. They took money off you there. Who did? As a matter of interest, how much did you pay for these? For, for like... For all of them in the past. No, just for what? Two pounds. Two pound. You would have sold that for about thirty. Yeah, very easily. But not this time. The man leaves without his cigarettes, which will now be destroyed. Meanwhile, another passenger from Pakistan has been brought down by immigration officers. They suspect he's breached his student visa by working when he should have been studying. Apparently, the university or college papers that he's given to the officers. He thinks a little bit dodgy, so the immigration officers just has to go in the bags to see if there's any other doc documentation that backs his story up, basically. Almost immediately, Gary finds the man's UK lorry driving license. Unusual paperwork for a student. Have you had a license for a large goods vehicle? Do you drive for someone? No? But we all like big lorries, don't we? But I don't necessarily want to pass the test. So why would you want to pass the test for? No, I understand. But why would you want to learn to drive a big lorry in the UK unless you were working for somebody? Convinced he's been working, Gary presses the man for details of his alleged university. So in this college, what's the name of the college? Oxford. And how many people go to that college? 25, just make that up now. And what's the names of the people, the people in the class? Roll me five off, starting now. Go away, you're making this up. I'm going to give you five quicker names. If the man wants to convince Gary, his answers will have to be better than that. Gatwick, Officer Paul is still talking to the man from Moldova who's hidden cigarettes in his waterproof trousers. Basically you get a 200 cigarette allowance. Once you go over that allowance, you forfeit that allowance. So all the items that you brought in today are going to be seized, yeah? You understand that, and I think you knew it before, didn't you? That's why they were hidden. Yeah, they thought me. As Paul finishes up his search of the man's bags, Officer Sarah takes him aside for a quick word. What's up? Um, if you check the feet of those very large waterproof trousers, there's some in the feet. Oh, is there? The ones in the red bag. Cheeky. Check the other one. I think there might be another one in there. Pop that one back up. Pop that one back up. Sorry, Bring it back up. Have you got cigarettes in the bottom of these? I, I don't know. You do know, don't you? Because yeah. you did it. So bring the other pair out. This? this yes, one. yes, yes. Now you knew they were in there and you saw me put them back, um, but you still didn't tell me, did you? I, I don't remember. I think you do remember quite clearly. Oh my Paul is far from impressed that the man has tried to deceive him. Hidden in the two pairs of trousers are over 200 cigarettes. Now, is there anything else you want to tell me about? No. No? no? That's it, is it? Good. Check again. It would have been just yeah, better I'm... if you'd have been honest with me yeah, at the beginning, yes? In all, the man was trying to smuggle almost 3,000 cigarettes. Yeah, I, I have to say, I don't know, I've never seen cigarettes packed like this before. This is the first time for me. He'd, um, hidden them on advice from his friends. Uh, but I think he totally knew why he was hiding them. Your passport and you're free to go. 
Okay. Back in Manchester, Gary's team have almost finished searching the man suspected of breaching his student visa. I mean, this, this just looks like a photocopy of something that's been made up. It doesn't even look convincing, does it? And it doesn't look good. Do you think he'll get landed? Probably temporary admission to come back tomorrow with the rest of the uh, proof that he's been studying. And if he thinks you're onto him, he just wouldn't come back. Well, then. I know, exactly. And the fact that there's, there's information in his bag about he's taken uh, a HGV course in driving suggests to me that he's obviously possibly could be working. Gary then finds some suspicious credit cards that cast further doubt on the man's credibility. It's all a bit strange, but it's not a customs issue. But the search has found no evidence of drugs, so the man is taken back up to the immigration area. He'll be given 24 hours to prove that he's returned to the UK to study, or he'll be removed. The next day, the man suspected of breaching his visa by working in the UK returned voluntarily to Pakistan. 